My name's Joseph Hudson, also known as Josephus in the wrestling world. I've been wrestling around five years. I got into it because I was interested in writing a screenplay about wrestling, but eventually fell in love with the wrestling itself. I got in the wrestling business around 2008. I was initially a cameraman, and then I was training at the time and had my first match in 2009. Originally, Tony Falk and his son broke me into the business. After that, I got in with uh, Dutch Mantel and actually Wolfie. I started traveling on the road with Wolfie around the time I started training with Dutch. I used to watch the territory stuff from Memphis when I was a kid with my grandfather. And that wasn't really Wolfie's time. It was more the time where Lawler was the main guy and you had Dutch Mantel, Austin Idol, Bill Dundee. They were kind of the top guys. I got out of it a little bit of the watching probably when Wolfie was making his debut. So I actually didn't know Wolfie uh, growing up or anything like that as in the sense of watching him on television. I think the Memphis fan base is very loyal because they still just want to see a good old fashioned fight between a couple of guys. I mean, they'll come see a fight every week. It doesn't have to be like a bunch of spot monkeys or anything like that. They want to see a good old fashioned fight, even if it's people that don't always look the part. They want to have angles, they want to have stories, they want to have drama to believe in and baby faces to believe in and follow and see the heel get their ass handed to them. Around maybe early 90s, I quit watching wrestling for almost 10 years. I just wasn't interested anymore and kind of felt like wrestling was absurd and so I quit watching it. But at the same time, that's the reason I started doing it later in life because it's absurd. Tony Falk's son, LT, was going on a road trip and he wanted me to drive him. And he said, we're also going to drive this guy that was in WWF and TNA named Wolfie D. And once again, I had no idea who that was. And thus began the fateful, fatal, not fatal, but strange road trip that I started with Wolfie D and the strange life trip I started with Wolfie D. Well, when I met Wolfie, I don't think it was a good time in his life. Um... One of his former girlfriends who had his kid eventually was down in Florida. So Wolfie D was kind of left to his own devices in Nashville at this apartment near the Municipal Auditorium. And so he was kind of, I think, ready to party a little bit. And I, I had never really been around a wrestler that had been somewhere at that point. And so Wolfie is the kind of guy who wants what he wants. He wanted to drink in the car. He wanted to do other things that were a little bit out of control. Um, but he wanted it right at that moment. It was like, I want instant gratification. I'm a star. And I hadn't really encountered that. I just encountered a bunch of guys who looked like idiots that, were, that happened to be in a wrestling ring at the time. Well, I could tell that Wolfie was a professional in wrestling, that he knew how to put a match together, that he knew what the business was and should be. And I also could see the difference between a guy like him and a guy that just wrestles locally for 20 years. He knew, he knew the business and he knew the psychology of the business. But his personal life was in shambles and He's an alcoholic, so I kind of saw the dichotomy between someone who's super... I saw the dichotomy between someone who's super talented and that their personal life isn't really together, and he's probably his own worst enemy. Well, because he's really good, because Wolfie is really good at wrestling, he can have an amazing match with anybody. I mean, that's what they say a good worker can do. They can have an amazing match with anybody. He can make a broomstick look good, and that's his own words, and that's the truth. But when you see that, when you see the beauty of, like, a great wrestling match, and then you see the road trip home where he's destroying himself through alcohol, and he's really just destroying his life because he can't stop drinking once he starts, it's a, it's a sad situation, but it's also a heartbreaking situation because you know... You know that that guy could have been at the top or, or close to the top. He should have been a bigger star than he has been. Well, I think initially Wolfie kind of treated me like a mark. He wanted me to, I asked him to help me work on his, my punches because I thought his punches were always really great. 
And he's like, oh yeah, come on over to my house. We'll work on those punches. But on the way over, pick up a pint of vodka for me. Popov, which was his brand, which is the worst stuff you could ever put in your body. But through all that, through him kind of treating me like a mark through these road trips where a lot of the times he's not totally sober, but some of the times he is, you're still going to, through osmosis and through sometimes direct training, he'll show, he showed me quite a few things. And plus I was uh, wrestling him quite a bit. So you're going to pick things up in the ring just by being in there with a guy like him if you're intelligent enough to do so. Some of the basic things a guy like me would know is to listen to the people. And he's the first guy that ever even said that phrase to me. Because the people can give you the indication of when a match should go home. And I had no concept of that. I just kind of, you know, like you see a lot of guys nowadays, they choreograph their matches in the back and the emotions of the people don't even matter a thing. But a guy like him understands that the people are the most important thing for the most part. At the same time, you have to command their attention no matter what you're doing. And he can do both. He can actually listen to the people, but he can make the people listen to him and then almost control their emotions through what he's doing in the ring. Um, other things that he taught me were just that you could have a certain sequence in a match, but then you can mix it up 20 different ways where you're still doing the same things, but in a different order. And you can constantly work like one sequence mixed up 10 different times in a match at a diff you know, particular moment. Yeah, I saw a lot of times where his drinking interfered with his work. For the most part, even when Wolfie was plastered, he could keep a, a decent match going. But I've also seen him kind of spiral out where, I think, for instance, we were having a match and it was like a lumber, fans lumberjack match. I know there's a lot of different types of those, but this one was just where the fans had some belts and if we stepped out of the ring, they belted us. And he was wrestling that match when he was drunk. And I, I swear he almost beat up one of the fans because, I, you know, he couldn't really, they walloped him pretty good. And I just, I grabbed him back in the ring when I felt like that was about to happen. Luckily it didn't. But really I've seen him also get canceled off of bookings because like he would go on a binge for a couple of days and somebody knew that was happening. So they're like, and I'd be the messenger. They'd be like, tell Wolfie, He's off this booking. It's hard to be bearer of bad news for a guy like Wolfie just because Wolfie wants what he wants, especially back then. He wanted that immediate gratification. He wanted people to do what he wanted when he's plastered or whatever when he wants it, whether it's a booking or anything else. You know, like my big joke with him is we get in the car after a uh, a trip or after a match when we had to drive home, he'd be like, take me to the liquor store. It's like, no, we're not going to do that. Take me to the liquor store. I mean, he's kind of like the, back then he was the kid who would ask you to do something a hundred times until you gave in. And I think he hurt his chances in the, even in indie bookings because of that. But me being the bearer of bad news to a guy like him is horrible. So I'd always have to deflect it. I was like, well, you have their number. So call them. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm the media there. Not the, the interview guy. Yeah. The, I'm the behind the scenes. No. So, so you're doing great with the fact that I can't ask a question. Right. No, I am Thank you for having patience <laughs> with me. I'm used, <laughs> sw I swear I'm used to it now. They, AMC always tells you to phrase the answer yes. as the first, the question, you know, so I'm trying to I do that. I ask a lot of questions that, that in my head, it sounds right, but it comes out as a yes or no question. Right. And, it is, and, I, and I know I do it to myself, and I'm like, oh, I should have explained that better. No, that's okay. I'm, like I said, I've only been doing that show a couple of weeks, but I'm already used to the process. Oh, you but... got the process better than everybody. <laughs> I mean, this is a breeze. Good, good. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably talk about the last time he came out, but... Well, when Wolfie got out of rehab, he reached out to me. But I, I could just, sometimes you sense something about someone. You sense that their burdens are gone and that they're ready to approach life in a new way. And I think that's where he is right now. He just had a kid. And I think having a kid brings that innocence back to you. 
and I, and I hope that he can stay in that space. I hope that he finds that space to retain that, that innocence and that love for life for the rest of his life, because this is always going to be a struggle for him. My father was an alcoholic, so I've seen a little bit of that struggle. I was a kid when I saw it, but I, I saw that, and he let it get the best of him. And I think Wolfie's too good of a guy to let this get the best of him. I've seen that. I've seen the goodness in him. I've seen the, the evil of alcohol in him, but I've seen the goodness, and I think the goodness will win. Oh, I have, I have a very good story about Wolfie being Wolfie. One night, Wolfie and I had come home for Evansville, from Evansville, and it was like Wolfie, my wife, and, and I, and we were downtown Nashville. He's working at Coyote Ugly. He just wanted to go down there to check in at work. He hadn't had a drink or anything. I think he was out of money or something. Well, we had gotten a payoff, so that's right. We got a payoff, and he wanted to blow that payoff. But he didn't want to do it on the ride home because we'd had too much friction before about him drinking in the car. So anyway, we go to this bar down the street from Coyote Ugly, and there's a big old Mark who works in there, and he knew Wolfie. Wolfie was getting some free drinks. They lock up for some weird reason. They all of a sudden decide to lock up, and Wolfie and the guy kind of butt heads, and Wolfie's just looking at the guy like, I know that didn't just happen. And I, I, I don't know what happened, but the next thing I know, Wolfie just, goosh, he just jacked the guy's jaw. <laughs> And immediately there were like four bouncers there throwing all of us out, he, my wife, and I. And we just walked back to the car and I took him home. <laughs> so he just jacked this big old Mark's jaw. It was one of these guys that was like, yeah, I've had five matches before. And you're just kind of like, oh, shut the hell up. He just jacked that guy's jaw. I think that, to me, that was Wolfie's subconscious coming out. He wanted to do that anyway. But it was really the, the alcohol that allowed him to do so. You know that Snoop guy? You ever meet him downtown? No. Big old Chase Stevens, Mark, or whatever. No, I know Chase, I know, and I know his. Uh, his, emo. his little <laughs> yeah. This guy would always dress like him with the uh, bandanas and. Uh. Chris Michaels. <laughs> I mean, he's like it's like Chase, Chris, and then Snoop. <laughs> but Wolfie jacked him, man. Well, Wolfie D right now is is living in the redemption of of recovery from alcohol, from everything. He's got a new kid. He's got a good woman in his life. He's coming from a hellacious history of alcohol, poisoning, poisoning him and poisoning his, his life. He was a star. He's been a lot of places in wrestling. And now he has to, to be a lot of places for his family and for himself. Okay. So look at the camera for this one. Yeah. Wolfie D, I wish you all the best. I know you're going to conquer your demons. I love you. And I look forward to being in your life. Ah, let me do that over. That okay. sucks. Wolfie D, I know you're going to conquer your demons. I look forward to your journey. I look forward to hearing about it. <laughs> I'm trying to cut a promo now. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, and all the other stuff. Perfect. Yeah. Wolfie D, conquer those demons. Live that life, man. Your kids need you, your woman needs you, and you need you.